Here on Lazy Game Reviews, I've covered all sorts of lesser-known games. But you know what? Sometimes I just want to cover a game that needs no introduction. BAM! Lemmings! Developed by DMA Design Limited and published by Psygnosis in 1991. The full game was originally developed on the Commodore Amiga, but was then ported to the DOS version shown here, as well as approximately 15 million other systems. You may think that is an exaggeration, but it is not. According to the cover, the developers are not responsible for loss of sanity, hair, or sleep, which is pretty useless information to insane, bald insomniacs. An interesting thing to note is that Lemmings was the first hugely successful game by DMA Design and programmer David Jones, who later went on to develop Grand Theft Auto, with DMA Design becoming Rockstar North. Yes, if it weren't for this game, GTA may have never happened. Also, if it weren't for the game Blood Money, this may have never happened, as Lemmings actually started off as an animation demo on the PC for the follow-up to Blood Money, titled Walker. There was a challenge at DMA Design to make a believable animated walking man sprite in less than 16 by 16 pixels. Turns out it could be done in 8x8, and after several tweaks, the walking lemming animation was born. They did what any sensible programmers would do, they started putting these little guys in various landscapes full of traps, smashing them up in increasingly brutal ways. They did later develop Grand Theft Auto, after all. After a bunch of levels were made in deluxe paint, eventually a game came out of it, and we got Lemmings. Inside the box, you get a set of five and a quarter inch or three and a half inch floppy disks, and a nice, colorful manual covering gameplay strategy and detailed instructions for the Amiga, Atari ST, and MS-DOS versions of the game. Once you start it up, you're greeted with a menu, providing a menu of choices to choose. Start a game, choose a level, change sound and music options, swap control methods, and select the puzzle set to play. You're provided with 120 puzzles divided into four difficulty levels. Fun, tricky, taxing, and mayhem. Unless you're an inexorable sadomasochist, it's recommended that you play these in order from fun to mayhem, as the skills learned in the earlier puzzles will have to be put to clever use in later puzzles. Or if you've played the game before, you may just want to enter a password to jump to a puzzle. Of course, you'll need to know the password, as incorrect ones only result in abject failure. Once a puzzle loads, you're given a set number of lemmings, a minimum release rate of the lemmings, and some objectives to complete of the lemmings. The trapdoor opens, and the lemmings will start dropping into the level one by one, walking endlessly back and forth until you tell them otherwise or they run into an obstacle. Yes, they're based on that old myth of lemmings being suicidal, which was created by Disney. Look it up, it's not real. The entire goal here is to make sure the proper percentage of stupid lemmings reach the exit before running out of time. The levels are composed of materials that are both destructible and indestructible, and filled with obstacles and booby traps. I said booby. And unless you just want to use a joystick or keyboard, you'll use the mouse to look around the level and accomplish your goal by using 12 buttons along the bottom of the screen. You can change the rate of lemmings falling from the entrance door, assign a limited number of rolls to the lemmings, pause the game, and nuke the level. For the different skills, you've got climbers that can climb certain vertical walls, floaters that are not things of poop, they use umbrellas to parachute straight down from perilous heights, bombers not associated with Al-Qaeda that will explode after five seconds, blockers that prevent other lemmings from passing by, Builders that build stairways composed of 12 bricks until they meet an obstacle. And bashers, miners, and diggers, which dig through certain materials horizontally, diagonally downwards, and straight downwards, respectively. You're only given a limited number of each of these roles or skills for each level, and that is the entire strategy element of the game. Learning the small tricks and quirks of each of these is essential for progressing through the game. If you don't utilize these properly, a lemming may die from falling a certain height, drowning, burning in lava, falling off the edge of the screen, getting stuck in a pit, or getting violently maimed by any number of evil and awesome traps. Lose enough lemmings or run out of time and it will be impossible to continue to the next level. You'll be seeing a variety of sweet level designs along the way, from underground to snow to hellish landscapes to references to other Psygnosis games like Shadow of the Beast, Menace, and Awesome. But no matter the look of the level, the gameplay remains the same. Assign skills and don't let the lemmings die. Pretty simple stuff, and it's this simplicity that makes the game so approachable and so timeless. But it's the incredible challenge of the later levels that makes it so incredibly addictive, at least if you like logical puzzle games. 
If you don't, then Lemmings will probably drive you up the wall really fast, making you want to use the nuke button on yourself. Another thing that may drive you crazy pretty quickly is the music, which is catchy in the worst way possible. You'll hear the same tunes over and over and over again, and it almost feels like the game is taunting you with the millionth play of London bridges falling down or whatever. That and some of the puzzles are just downright mean. I mentioned the quirks you'll have to deal with, and a good portion of that stems from the necessity of pixel-perfect lemming placement. If you pause the game, you can't apply any skills, so you have to do it all in real time, and it's incredibly annoying to be a single pixel off from completing a level, or running out of time due to trying to get that perfect placement. Of course, once you do figure it out, it's just a matter of replaying the level and doing it properly, so the annoyance is short-lived. <laughs> well, at least until you get about three-quarters of the way through the game, where the levels get so freaking stupidly difficult that I usually give up and resort to a strategy guide. This kills the puzzle enjoyment for me, so I see no point in playing after that. However, once you get sick of this one, there's also an expansion for the original game called Oh No, More Lemmings. It was released as both a standalone game or as an add-on to the original game, which is noted by this little sticker in the corner here. It includes 100 more levels, divided into groups titled Tame, Crazy, Wild, Wicked, and Havoc. And yes, those last couple are absolutely, uh, wicked and havoc-y. Brutal, that is, and only for the hardest of hardcore Lemmings players. In fact, many of the levels only have one way to complete them due to a smaller skill quota, which really ups the challenge. You do get a welcome amount of variety here, though, with each of the levels being unique, unlike the original game, which included some levels multiple times in differing degrees of difficulty. Another thing worth noting really quick is that there is really no one definitive version of Lemmings, as the DOS version is actually kind of crappy. Now don't get me wrong, it's not the worst port, and it's still a great game, but I am mostly playing it for nostalgia, and there are plenty of other ports out there, and with these came all sorts of tweaks. I'm only going to cover a couple notable ones here, starting with the original Amiga version. This is probably the best of the early versions of the game, not only for its superior graphics and sound, but also for its addition of a two-player split-screen mode. Each player can use their own mouse to solve unique two-player puzzles, which makes for some absolutely brilliant gameplay, and makes you want to kill your friends. The Atari ST, Sega Mega Drive, and Super Nintendo versions also have two-player modes, but I would still go with the Amiga version if you have the option. Also worth noting is Lemmings for Windows, where you get Oh No, More Lemmings included with it, new sounds, an easy-to-use level select menu, and the addition of a fast-forward button to speed things up when you're just impatiently waiting for Lemmings to do their thing. Of course, there are a number of other worthwhile ports for systems like the Macintosh, PlayStation, 3DO, and even one for the Sinclair Spectrum, which is surprisingly pretty decent. Not to mention a slew of sequels, spin-offs, and remakes. Honestly, if you happen to come across any of the versions of the original Lemmings, I'd pick it up. It's just an awesome puzzle game and remains quite unique to this day. Even if some of the levels get downright frustrating and the appeal of the game diminishes greatly after you complete it once, it's always fun to nuke a level and watch them explode into bright and cheery pixels. And if there's one thing I've learned from all my years of gaming, it's that pointless pixelated violence is the best kind.